Today we're going to be installing this ring alarm system, not just for the normal alarm stuff, but also to monitor for leaks and for fire. Let's go. As you might see here, we have quite a bit of stuff. This is the eight piece kit. We just got this off Amazon. This isn't sponsored or anything like that. Uh, this kit has the base station, an alarm pad, an extender, a motion detector, and four contact sensors, meaning like for a door opening. We plan on putting those on both of our main doors as well as this rear door. And then eventually we're gonna put it on all of our basement doors. But in addition to that, as you can see, we have quite a few flood and freeze sensors. Now, I'm not really that concerned about freeze, although we'd like to know, but the main reason we have these is to know if something's leaking. You know how these RVs are, they go down the road, they're bouncing, they're moving, it's like an earthquake, plumbing can come loose, things can happen, check valves can break, we've been there. So we like to put these wherever there might be a problem. I have five of them, uh, one for the basement, one under every sink, one behind every toilet, and I think that'll be enough. The other thing we like to do is we like to replace all of these stock smoke detectors in the RV with ones that will connect to our ring alarm system and of course alert us via our apps, our phones, and all that stuff if there's ever smoke detected or CO detected. Now I've got six of these because in addition to replacing the ones that are in the RV, we're going to be placing some additional ones in the front bay and in the basement because let's face it fires can be down there too and then the smoke might not get in here uh, so we want to have detection down there also so our first step is going to be to get this guy set up because everything connects to this guy oh i almost forgot also have a ring video doorbell which we're going to permanently mount this time to our front door uh, last time we just had it on via command strips but i think we're going to try to permanently install this one on the front door so it doesn't interfere with anything but so that we have the doorbell and also so we have our like little virtual peephole if we need to look out uh, because we don't really have a good way to look out that window. So step one, let's get this guy set up and connected and in the app and then we can connect everything to it. going to mount this one very much like we had it in our 397 up on this wall here although I might put it a little higher on the wall because there's a window where there used to be a wall uh, and I also might wire it in power wise to our UPS that's going to be up there for our network equipment but for the purpose of this video and for setting it up I'm just going to be setting it right here and uh, plugging it in down there and I'll worry about placement later. Today's all about connectivity and getting all the accessories mounted on the doors and such. A quick note before I get into the installation on why we use Ring versus like Simply Save or things like that. Now, back in 2017 and 2018, when we did this the first time, a lot of the competitors to Ring, like Simply Safe, and uh, I forget what the other ones are, so many of them are designed for brick and mortar homes. But Simply Safe did not at that time allow self monitoring, meaning you had to have a monitoring package and a permanent fixed address tied to your account for this thing to actually work. Ring wasn't that way. Ring does self monitoring. Now, I think I've heard in some of our comments on our old video from a few years ago that Simply Safe does do self monitoring now. So that might be an option for you. Perfectly valid. We really like the Ring system. We've got a Ring system at our cabin. We had it in our last RV, and of course, we're going to have it here. Now, the reason we like it is like everything's in one app. It's like boom, boom, boom. We've got everything right there, the doorbell, the alarm system. It's all right there in the app. We really like it, so that's why we stuck with Ring going forward this time. I'm going to set this like this so you can see the front, and we'll go through the setup on the phone here. Set up a device, security, Ring alarm, one Ethernet port, Yep, got little pictures and everything. Location RV, choose a good spot, blah, blah, blah. Find my base station, still searching. It's right here, see it? Can't find your base station. Oh, it says to press the button to begin pairing mode, which is right there, okay? So that's what happens if you read the directions. Oh, there it is, found it this time. Okay, do you want to do Ethernet or Wi-Fi? For now, I'm going to do Wi-Fi. 
I'm going to connect it to our 2 gigahertz. I'm having some issues connecting this to Wi-Fi, and I think I might know what it is on our router, which is actually sitting right over here, so I know it's not a connectivity problem, uh, which we're going to get to the whole internet setup, but it's sitting over here on the desk, and I had the security set for WPA3 personal. I changed the security protocol to WPA2 slash WPA3 personal, which is, I believe, how our last router was set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a try now. And let's see if this has any better luck. Come on, man, you can do it. I don't know what's going on here. Oh, it's moving on now. Maybe it had to recycle a few times. Now it says, okay. Your Ring Protect Pro Trial starts now. All right, continue. Another thing that I like about having the full protection plan is it has the cellular backup, meaning if our Wi-Fi goes out, it will connect over cellular directly. It's also got a built-in battery, so if it loses power, it has that backup power, but it will alert us until its power is out. So this is one of our main ways of also knowing how our power situation is in the RV when we're not here. So this is the part where the ring alarm updates. We will let this run, come back to it in a little bit. I wanna just interject here real quick and cover something that I didn't really show in that setup because it occurred over a couple of days. I realized setting this up that when I set this up last time, and again, it was like four or five years ago, that the way I did it was a little confusing. And let me try to explain. The professional monitoring versus the self-monitoring, one of the things that's included in that professional and not in self-monitoring is cellular backup on the device. Now, when we first set this up five years ago, all we had was a Wi-Fi Ranger, uh, and I wasn't real confident in our internet, and I wanted it to have a backup. And the way I did that was a bit roundabout and probably definitely unconventional. When I set it up, I put in our traveling mailbox address for our monitoring address. And obviously we don't really want monitoring at some random place in Orlando, uh, but that's what I used just to get it set up. And then what happened is they weren't able to verify that address because it was like a commercial type address or something. And I just left it. And what that ended up doing was we had professional monitoring as far as a tier and we were paying for professional monitoring, but our system was not professionally monitored by people on a call center or whatever, but we did have the cellular backup and I just left it alone. Now, when I set this one up, I hadn't remembered all of that uh, until I actually contacted support because what happened is when I put in our traveling mailbox this time, Ring was able to verify that address. Uh, and that was bad. We definitely don't want our alarm system going off here and police or fire being dispatched to Orlando. So I contacted them via chat, talked through it, and what I ended up doing was just failing back to self-monitoring and not having the cellular backup option. And we're okay with that because our internet system now has about four backups in place. So it's super strong. Of course, we'll have a video on that in the future. So it took about 15, 20 minutes for this thing to download and install its updates. And now we're all good to go. From this point forward, all we're doing is adding individual devices to the system and then installing them. And it's really super simple and it's pretty much the same for each device. You'll notice that each device, like these contact sensors, has a QR code on the back here. And these QR codes are unique to each device and it's how you add each one to the system. And you'll find that this QR code is on the box, but it's also on the actual device. You'll see it's got it right on the edge there. So if for some reason you lose the box, throw it away or whatever, that's fine. The first thing I'm gonna add here is a contact sensor. This is a little magnet thing where you put this part on the door jam and this part on the door. And whenever it breaks contact, it of course senses that the door is open. So my first step is to go here and say, add a device. Now it's got a shortcut here for me, but I could go into this menu, go to devices, and you'll actually notice it's got all of the devices that came in the kit because it just knows it on the back end. I added this system, it knows that these devices came in the kit. So it's gonna show me these devices are offline, uh, but when I say set up a device, and then I say security, I think, sensors, contact sensor, second gen. 
an introduction, scan QR code. I'm going to scan the one right on the device here. Come on, man, focus. Here we go. Got it. Use this code. It sees it is ring contact sensor. Pull the tab on the back of the sensor so it can make its battery connect. There we go. Boy, it was hard to get that one out of there. I had to pull the back off of it, which I'll have to do anyway to install it. So you'll see on the display here, out of all these devices, the one I just scanned, it says device added. Tap here to finish setting it up. I'm gonna do that. Oh, yeah, see, you'll notice it's already doing its thing. But we gotta tell it things like, where will this sensor be used? I'm gonna say secondary door. And we will say custom. The room is named office. Continue. And now I give the sensor a name. This will be office door. If you're installing this on a door, choose a side without door hinges, of course. So it has some tips here, clean installation area, one inch maximum. So that's kind of handy because a lot of times you can't get these things to be really close. You'll see it's about that far, about an inch, and it still works. We won't have ours that far away though, but it's good to know you have that flexibility and physically install it now, which is right over here. So I close the door here so there's not quite so much glare coming in. And these are really simple. Like I mentioned, you want to put this part on the door jam on the non hinge side, meaning you don't want it over here. This door opens this way. In the past, they used to give little tiny screws with the kit and not this time. None of these contact sensors have screws. You see there's holes on the back here to actually physically screw them in. Uh, but now they just supply the adhesive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and move forward with this with just the adhesive and see how they do. And if any of them start to fall off, I can come back later and screw them in. And of course, you don't want this too far over this way so it interferes with the opening or closing. That's got to clear, but you can hear it's doing quite well. Easy peasy. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to put two more contact sensors on one on the door right behind me, which is gonna be called patio door. And then I'm going to put one on our front door called front door. Back to this project, clearly it's a different day, different shirt, lots of new stuff going on. But I had to stop this in the middle to do things like go to the RV show. Next up is this control panel. This is again, every single one of these devices that you add into the system is done the same way. There is a QR code, you scan it, it finds it, it connects it to the system, it's really pretty easy. Now, this one, as you may have just noticed, has a sliding back on it. That's because this device, like a lot of the devices, are rechargeable. Uh, so the system will tell you when the battery is getting low and to you know, plug it back in. And it's just a USB connection to charge this thing up. But this is the part that gets mounted to the wall. Now, as you can see, it's got some screw mounts in there. I'm not gonna use those, I'm gonna use command strips. Now I'm not gonna use the command strips that actually have the Velcro-like thing where you have one piece on each side. I am going to use these, which are kind of refills for things like command hooks, where you just kind of peel it off and stick it on. And I'm gonna use two of these and just put them here and here. Go stick it on the wall and that's it. It's that simple after I add it to the system, of course. Keypad hung. Uh, the thing I like about attaching that bracket is now the keypad can slide in and out, taken off and be charged very easily. Now I can't really use the same kind on the alarm module itself. I'm gonna go ahead and mount this before I move on because it, you might be able to see and you might not. There's a little bit of a lip right here and mounting this here, it does not pass that lip. Uh, so I'm going to use regular command strips because when you put two of these together to actually mount it, it's plenty thick enough to get over that lip. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and use just regular old command strips for this base unit. So 
So now it's time to go ahead and get all of these smoke and CO detectors installed. You can see I've got them all out of the packaging. I went ahead and removed them from the packaging, got the batteries and the screws and everything out. Uh, and I've got these lined up, how I'm gonna put them in. I'm gonna go ahead and program them first, and then go install them. Uh, I've got the front bay, the basement, the bedroom, the bathroom, the living room, and the garage slash office. Uh, so I'm just going to keep them in this order, program them down the line, and then go install them, which is really simple. And you, you can see there's a little mounting plate here. You screw that on, pop this on. Installing it is super easy. Just like the rest of our devices, it's set up a device. I'm going to check security. and alarms are in here, but I'm just going to hit scan QR code. If you scan the QR code, you don't have to select the device. And again, these, just like every other device, has the QR code. Boom, use this code, and then it'll basically walk you through everything else. Uh, slide open the tray, insert the batteries, and push in the tray. Easy peasy. Ooh, preparing to add device. Daisy's gonna hate this part. Device added, tap here to finish setting up. Boom, uh, this one is going to be in the front bay. So, uh, custom front bay. And I'm just going to call it smoke and CO alarm. Now I'm going to go down the line here and do each one of these. And then I'm going to go install. Them. New day, new wardrobe, new shirt. Uh, this project isn't supposed to take three days, but here we are. What I wanna do today is the last of this project, and that will be these five flood and free sensors, uh, the ring doorbell, and the motion, motion detector. These flood and free sensors are one of our main uses, main pluses of this ring alarm system, is that if one of these things detects water, it will notify us immediately. And that's really, really important, particularly in places that you can't see, like in your basement, behind your Nautilus panel, behind the toilets, things like that. If you're away and these things start leaking, you wanna know about them right away, or if you're home, you wanna know about them. So we're gonna have one of these for the basement, and then we have one for each sink and one for each toilet. And if I find other areas in the future where that aren't covered, I can just buy one of these, link it to the system and add it in. It's super easy. Next up on the ring list is this ring video doorbell. We had this on our last RV and I attached it via command strips using the little angle adapter. I think I'm gonna just permanently mount this. Should be pretty easy. It's like it does come with a little wedge, which I may or may not use. Kind of might make it easier to mount. Um, but you can see all this thing is, is a little wedge so that you can take the doorbell and kind of angle it a little bit, which I think is a good idea simply because our slide is always right there and we can't see anything that direction anyway. So angling it this way allows us to see uh, basically in front of our RV and this full open side over here. Uh, so let's give it a shot. All right, so camera has been installed into the software and updated, and the install process is pretty simple. I'm going to use this wedge, uh, but if you don't, you basically are using four screw holes here along the edge behind the battery uh, cover plate. Uh, pretty simple. These will just screw right into these pre-made holes that line up. Uh, of course, this thing is designed to go either way. And, uh, and then this part will just get secured through these. They supply some screws, but they're designed to go into like, you know, household doors uh, or walls next to the doors usually. Uh, so I've got some short, they're only about three quarter inch screws. I know this door is at least an inch thick and it's foam on the inside. So I'm just gonna be very careful to not strip the holes out because once I do, I'll have to go into using filler or anchors or something like that. Uh, but I think four of these little screws will hold this thing on just fine. Time will tell. Let's go. Just going to do a couple pilot holes so these are easy to screw in. Now 
Now, one thing of note on this install on this door, especially when mounting it permanently, is to be aware of your door handle and not the handle you open it with, but the handle, the climb up handle, and make sure it doesn't interfere. Now, we have the new Moride, uh, I forget what it's called, but we'll put it on the screen. This handle here that just folds up nice and easy like that. And of course, it comes out. We'll have a link for that down below. But my point is the type of handles that flip like this, you just wanna make sure that it doesn't interfere with the camera. If you're gonna permanently mount your camera, you definitely wanna have that so it goes around it or next to it or somewhere where it can still fold over. I mentioned in the beginning of this video when we were talking about the contact sensors uh, that I planned on putting contact sensors on these bay doors. And I've since changed my mind about that uh, simply because we have four doors down here now and the area could be much easily covered with one motion sensor. Uh, that should cover all four doors and be much, much easier to install. I do, however, plan on putting a contact sensor on the front bay door. That way we've got full coverage on every entrance to the RV, uh, bay doors, front bay, main entrances, all that. So with that, we are now fully covered and secure with all of these things. We've got smoke, CO, water detection, power monitoring, and of course, all of the normal security stuff, as well as our ring doorbell for a front door camera. Now, we have a ton of projects coming up. Uh, we've got our internet, we're gonna have a Volta video, all kinds of stuff going on, new water filter, etc. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of those videos. We'll see you next time.